guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another true crime video. It's been a minute since I've done my regular true crime content. Thanks for being patient with me during my little break. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the Q and A that I just posted. If you didn't catch it, there'll be a link in the description. But I am back today with a solved case. You guys have been requesting more solved cases. And this one is really interesting. It's also a love triangle situation and I always find those cases to be pretty intriguing as well. Also, this case hasn't really gotten too much coverage, especially here on YouTube. So I wanted to cover it and tell on a story because I think more people need to hear it. Okay, so this case takes place in Alsea, Oregon, in an unincorporated community called Benton County. This is a really small area, only a couple hundred people live there, um, and Anna was not from this area. She's actually from Moscow, Russia. So how did she end up in Oregon? I will explain. She was 27 years old at the time and came from a strong family in Russia, and she was pretty happy over there. She had a successful career working an office job at Ikea. She was known to be a very friendly, chill person. She had a lot of friends, actually. She also loved animals, especially cats. I can relate. And she also loved to travel. And right before she came to America, Anna had just gotten out of her relationship with this guy that she was with for seven years. I mean, that is a long time to be with someone and she was absolutely heartbroken when they broke up. She's in her mid twenties and she knew she wanted to have a family. So she felt like she was really set back in life. So after she kind of grieved that relationship and was ready to move on, she hopped on a dating site. And this is when she came in contact with a 26 year old man from Oregon in the US and his name was Will Hargrove. And when they met, the two of them really hit it off. At first they just started chatting on the app and then they moved their conversation to Facebook and then eventually they decided to video chat. Now Will is known as someone who was pretty friendly and always trying to bring out the best in people, according to his friends and family. He was also known for being very personable, very funny, sarcastic. He had a lot of friends and he would always try to push others around him to be the best that they could be. He'd spend a lot of his free time at the local pool hall. He'd like to hang out there with friends. And he worked as a mechanic at a local car dealership. So when Anna and Will started talking, like I said, they really connected. One thing they really connected on was rock music and he really liked that she was into the same music as him. And he said he started falling in love with her and started sending her flowers and other small gifts to Russia. They'd spend a lot of their time talking about bands and concerts, watching live recordings on YouTube and you know, talking at the same time, almost as if they were at the concert together. And after a while, they decided that they wanted to meet up in person. So in December of 2016, Anna decided to book a flight to the United States. However, she had some trouble getting over here because she got a little bit confused. She tried to book her flight to Portland, Oregon, but instead booked her flight to Portland, Maine, which is on the other side of the country. So quite a conundrum. And imagine how scary that would be, honestly, to fly to the wrong city in a country that you've never been and not have the person you're supposed to meet up with there once you got there. But eventually they were able to get her a flight to Oregon and she went and met up with Will there. So she ended up spending 10 days in Oregon with Will and she really fell for him. Will showed her all around Oregon. He took her out to dinner. He bought her flowers and other little gifts and really spoiled her. So she was really into the lifestyle that she thought she would have if she were to move here permanently or marry him one day. And even though they had only spent about 10 days together in person, at the end of the trip, Will proposed to her and she said yes. And so they were engaged. I know a lot of you are already thinking that this is like a 90 day fiance situation, um, but Will and Anna were adamant that they really were in love with each other. This was not some type of mail order bride thing. There was no transactional thing. She truly loved him. He truly loved her and they wanted to be together. So she planned that she was gonna move to Oregon and they were gonna have this big fancy wedding and Will just kept telling her all of the nice things that they were gonna have once she was here and they could get married. And so all seemed really good. However, there's just one problem. Will has another girlfriend and her name is Michelle Chavez. Let me just go ahead and back up a little bit in time and tell you about how they met. So that was in 2015. Michelle was 33 years old at this time and she was married. However, her marriage was a mess. They were sleeping in different beds. They were pretty much just roommates, she said, and they had two kids together, but 
that's pretty much why they were still living under the same roof. Michelle worked as a taxi cab driver and in 2015, she picked up Will Hargrove and she was picking him up from that pool hall and he just charmed his way right into her heart and soon they fell in love. And by 2016, Michelle and Will were living together but not in the way that you would think. Will ended up moving in with her and her husband and lived in their spare bedroom and paid a small amount of rent to live there. And Michelle was so into Will and so desperate for him to come and live with them that she gave him a really, really good deal on rent. And then she also gave him her wedding ring to prove that she was eventually going to officially divorce her husband. And he was supposed to hang on to it until they actually got engaged. Uh, it was kind of like collateral. So it's not entirely clear how Michelle's husband felt about all this and how it was for them all living together under one roof, I really can't imagine. But it is possible, I guess, that he didn't even know that they were together. Maybe he thought Will was just staying there, that he was a friend or was a way to get extra money. So after months of them all living together, Will decided that this was just super awkward and he wanted Michelle to leave her husband so that they could start a new life together, but she wasn't doing this. So he started to get really jealous and he decided that the best way to get back at her was to hop onto a dating site, meet some other women, Maybe that would speed the process up. And you guessed it, this is how he ends up meeting Anna. Now, what's crazy about this is when Anna came and visited for those 10 days, she actually stayed in the same house as Will, Michelle, Michelle's ex-husband. And I think their kids were there as well. And because Michelle hadn't left her husband yet, made it official, Will was free to date whoever he wanted. I guess that's kind of what they agreed upon. So he brought his new girlfriend in the house. And at this point, Michelle and Will were pretty much just living together. They're just roommates. They were kind of broken up because she wouldn't leave her husband. It was a whole thing. So they're kind of on a break and he was free to see other people. So he brought her right to their house. And I'm not really sure what Anna felt about all this. I'm sure she thought it was strange, but she didn't know that Michelle and Will had much of a relationship, if anything's still lingering at all. Like he definitely told Anna that it was over between him and Michelle. And while she was there visiting, they hung out in his bedroom pretty much every day, all day, unless they went out and did something or went out to dinner, uh, but they never hung out in the rest of the house. And at first Michelle tried to be really cool about it. I mean, she really can't say shit because she did the same thing to her husband. But as the days went by that Anna was there, Michelle started to get really jealous and just seeing all the attention that Anna was getting and how happy Will looked just really set her off. And once Anna went back to Russia, she told him that she was not cool with that situation. She said that Anna could never come back and stay there again as a guest, that if she ever did, they would need to go find their own place. So the next year, Anna comes back in March of 2017. And when she gets there, Michelle is like, hell no, you guys are not staying in my house again. You guys need to find somewhere else to go. So Anna and Will decide to go get their own apartment and they rent a place in Corvallis, which is a little bit outside of where Michelle lived. So you would think that things are good now, right? Michelle has her husband, they're in their own house. Will and Anna are staying in an apartment. They can live their lives. But instead, Will decided to immediately start going back to Michelle. He would literally leave Anna in this apartment by herself and go back to Michelle's house, stay the night, do whatever else and come back. Now, Michelle was aware of this arrangement that he was going back and forth, but Anna was not. But over time, Anna figured it out. I mean, most women just start to get the feeling, especially when he's leaving like that. And at first he would tell Anna that he was, you know, working or he was doing errands or whatever else. But eventually she started to realize that he was cheating on her, but it became really obvious when Michelle added Anna on Facebook and she instantly noticed that Anna had a picture posted of her engagement ring and guess what? Will had used Michelle's wedding ring to propose to Anna. And this is not even a ring that he had bought for Michelle and gave to her, keep in mind. This is the ring that her previous husband gave to her. Will and Michelle never even got engaged. So in a sense, he stole it from her and gave it to Anna. So she messages her and tells her, you know, hey, you're wearing my ring. And Anna replies, and of course, Will had told her that this ring was from his grandmother. He had some big story. It's a family heirloom. 
And it was all made up. So shortly after this, Michelle decided to just tell Anna everything. She was really pissed off at Will. So she told her how he had just been going back and forth between the two of them. But at this time, Anna just saw Michelle as a crazy ex-girlfriend because that is what Will was telling her, that she's insane, don't believe anything she says, she's making this all up. So she just saw Michelle as a crazy ex-girlfriend. So she decides to respond to Michelle and tells her to stop being a bitch. And this really pissed off Michelle. So she responded back and said, if you think I'm bitchy now, just wait. So Anna pretty much decided to ignore everything Michelle said. And she was supposed to be marrying Will in three days on March 25th. And she decided to move forward with it. So on March 25th, the two of them head to the Oregon coast to get married. Before they left the house, she already had her wedding dress on. And on the way to their wedding, Anna and Will stopped at Wally World and picked up some wedding bands for the day. And while they were at the Walmart, Anna stayed in the car and Will was on the phone while he was looking at jewelry. There's surveillance video. You can actually see him looking at the rings and guess who he is on the phone with? Michelle. And he wasn't telling her about the rings there. He was asking her whether or not he could come sleep at her house that night. And Michelle claims that while she was talking to him, she had no idea that he was picking out wedding bands and was on the way to his wedding ceremony. So he gets back in the car with the bands and he and Anna drive to the Oregon coast. And when they get to the beach, there is no ceremony. There's nothing set up. Will had done absolutely nothing for their wedding. Now at the time, Anna did not know this, but Will had been pretending to set up their wedding the entire time. He literally called up some video game stores and pretended to be on the phone with them away from her. And then he would come back over to her and say, oh, sorry, honey, the wedding officiant canceled because they're sick. And you know, Anna was bummed, but she didn't think that this was Will's fault even though she had no idea that he never booked a wedding officiant, that he was literally on the phone with like a GameStop. It turns out that he never even applied for a marriage license. So he definitely wasn't planning on marrying her, which is so weird to have her wear her dress and go to the beach and act like they were gonna get married and then nothing was there. But anyway, Anna believed him and decided that they would just reschedule. So they hop back in the car and they head home. And on the way home, she's literally in her wedding dress and they're in the McDonald's drive-thru and there's surveillance footage. You can see her in the dress in the car. So a couple days after this, Michelle decides that she is gonna give Will an ultimatum. He needs to pick between her and Anna, no more of this back and forth shit. And Will assured Michelle that he was in love with her above anyone else and that they both wanted to be together and that she should leave her husband and he's gonna leave Anna and they can be together starting April 27th. They actually gave themselves this deadline. Those who knew Michelle said that she was really putting the pressure on Will to end the relationship with Anna as soon as possible, that he needed to fix it, send her back to Russia. And he told her that he would fix it. There were several occasions where Will said that he was gonna send Anna back to Russia like that night or the next day and then he just wouldn't follow through. And Anna, on the other hand, has no idea that this is happening, still thinks they're getting married on the rescheduled date. So April 15th comes and they're getting pretty close to their deadline. And Michelle and Will decide to go out on a date night to dinner on that Saturday. And that night around 8 p.m., just as Michelle was getting ready for Will to pick her up, he calls her and says that he can't come because Anna has just showed back up at the apartment. And Michelle was very upset when they talked on the phone. She couldn't believe that Anna had come back. She felt like Will just wasn't setting the tone strongly enough that he wanted to end things, which I'm pretty sure he wasn't trying to end things with her at all in reality. She still thought they were getting married. So it's very confusing, but they get off the phone and Will sends Michelle a text message that says, don't worry. I will have this permanently fixed by 1800 tomorrow. However, Michelle was really pissed off. She kept calling him over and over again to yell at him, to talk to him about the situation, but eventually he just turns his phone off. Around 2 a.m. that night, she leaves a voicemail on his phone saying, I guess you made your choice. Okay, I'll let you be. Then an hour later, around 3 a.m., she leaves another voicemail saying, Why? I just want to know why. I'll let you be, but I just want to know why. The next day was actually Easter, so Michelle went to her mother's house for a big Easter celebration. And meanwhile, back at his apartment, Will is dealing with a car insurance issue. He kept not paying his insurance, and they told him that if he didn't pay by the 16th, that he would lose his coverage. But while she was celebrating Easter with her family, Will calls her around 4.30 and tells her 
that he was stuck on the coast and that he had hit a deer and he needed help. He needed her to come and pick him up in Alsea. So Michelle agrees to go help him and she leaves her family get together and drives to Alsea. And while Will was waiting for her to come, there's footage of him at a local convenience store. He's buying some candy, some soda, some cigarettes. And then about an hour later, Michelle shows up. When Michelle gets there, Will tells her that he and Anna had had a really bad argument that she'd packed up all her stuff and left. And Michelle was super, super happy, super relieved that Anna was gone. From what Will said, it made it sound like Anna was never coming back. She thought Anna was gone for good. So the two of them end up getting in the car and having sex. He then drove her back to the convenience store in his car to where her car was, dropped her off, and she <laughs> goes back to her Easter celebration. And when she got there, her family said that she was in a great mood. Will, on the other hand, starts to head home, but on his way home, he makes a few stops. First, he stopped at an ATM at a gas station and pulled $200 out of Anna's bank account. And this is really, really strange, but while he's there, he starts talking to the people that are working at the gas station and confides in them about how his girlfriend had left him and he starts to cry. Then he made another stop at another ATM and pulled another $600 out of Anna's bank account. Then around nine or 9.30 ish, he drove to another bank and deposited $160 worth of that money into his bank account. And he did that so that he could pay that car insurance bill get his insurance back and go on his merry way. But then the next day, April 17th, 2017, there was a man who was working as a caretaker and walking in this really rural wooded forest area. And he ended up coming across Anna's body. And her body was just kind of laying out in the open on a trail. Whoever left her there didn't really try to conceal her that well, if at all. And she was found with one gunshot wound to her head. So investigators came to the scene and when they got there, they found a bunch of trash at the scene, personal trash. There was fast food trash, candy wrappers, cigarette butts, and some receipts. So of course, police are thinking this trash could have just already been there, but they also thought maybe this trash belongs to the person who murdered Anna. So while police are processing this crime scene, Will is actually sending text messages to Anna's phone and they say, Baby, I'm so sorry, please come home, I need you. Just let me know you're safe. Remember Will's story is that he and Anna got in a big fight and that Anna left and that technically she was missing and wasn't responding to anything that he was saying. But then get this shit. Will gets online and starts Googling about time travel. He starts going to random forums, Reddit, seeing if there's any way that he can go back in time and undo this. He actually put out a question on like Yahoo Answers or something and was like, how do I time travel back to April 16th? I did something bad and I need to fix it. And he actually referred to what he did as a horrible mistake, which I'm sure a lot of you are starting to figure out what happened here. At one point he was talking back and forth with people and clearly was distressed. He was on some forum talking about time travel and he said that he would literally sell his soul to go back in time. Now, while he's doing all this, he is blowing a bunch of Anna's money, which wasn't that much, but he's spending all of it on candy, Legos, video games, and other kind of childish toys, like boy stuff. And he even texted one of his friends during this time and said, I'm spending money like I shouldn't be because I'm trying to distract myself. So once the investigators had processed this crime scene, they found out that one of the receipts that was there was from a KFC. It was from three days earlier and, it, and the receipt didn't have a name on it, but the KFC restaurant said that there was a car that pulled up on that Friday and that there were two purchases made from that car. One purchase was made with a card that came back belonging to someone named Kevin Thomas and the other purchase was made with cash. So they decided to go find this Kevin Thomas person and talk to him. Well, then we're trying to put some pieces together for the case. Um, the garbage we found was, I think, something you bought last week from KFC. Okay. Do you know about that? Yeah, me and my brother go to KFC. Go to KFC. On Fridays. What's your brother's name, Kevin? Uh, Will Hargrove. So as you heard, they found out that Kevin is related to a man named Will Hargrove. And as they talked to him, they actually found out that Will is not his real brother. They just call each other brothers because they play at the pool hall. And he also told police that Will had asked him to borrow his shotgun a few weeks earlier to go shoot it in the forest and blow off some steam. Just said he was gonna go up and go shooting in the woods and just 
kind of blow off some steam. But he never gave it back to him. And as far as he knew, Will still had the gun. So police go to Michelle's house where Will is staying. And Will immediately starts lying to them and saying that he and Michelle had gone on a drive to the Aussie area that day and that's why his trash was in the area. It was Easter Sunday, she had her Easter gathering, but they just went on this drive. So they asked him if he had dropped off any trash anywhere while he was in the area. And he said yes, but he said he dropped it off on the side of the convenience store. And it was the same items that they actually found at the crime scene, although he was telling them it's at the convenience store, not on the trail where Anna's body was. Drove into Elsie, stopped at the little market there, picked up a pack of cigarettes and drove back. Did you dump some trash there when you were there? Yeah, I did. On the side of the building, on the side of the general store. So they ask Will to come in and talk to them at the police station. And he agrees, but before he goes, he sends Michelle a text and it says, picked you up at your mom's and drove to Elsie general store and drove back. So he's obviously telling her what the story is and to go with this. And I'm not sure what's going through Michelle's mind at this time, but can't be good. So they bring him into the station and Will starts acting like he barely knew Anna, that they had gone on a few dates and she was kind of a psycho. So he tried to end things with her as soon as he could. In fact, he said that after a couple dates, he told her that it just wasn't gonna work out and she needed to accept that and she wouldn't. So clearly he was trying to downplay their relationship. He left out the small detail that they were engaged. And he actually claimed that Anna was so crazy that she pretended that they were engaged and posted it on Facebook, which caused all types of issues for him. So Will seems pretty confident in his lies and the police are definitely making it seem like there's not really too much to worry about here. So he's being pretty open until they drop the bomb. So of course he tries to play it off like he's shocked and has no idea how the trash ended up near Anna's body or that Anna's body was found in the first place. He tries to be shocked about that, but pretty quickly it started to sink in that he was fucked and he is gonna need a lawyer. So he stops talking to them request the lawyer. However, the police decide to go ahead and put him under arrest for the murder of Anna Repkina. Okay, so uh, William Hargrove, I need you to stand up and put your hand behind your back. You're under the arrest for the murder of Anna Repkina. But after talking to him, they were really curious about Michelle's possible role in all this because as I said in the beginning, this is a love triangle situation. So Michelle was brought in for questioning and at first she really tried to go with the Will's story that he had told her to say. And he picked you up at your mom's house at that time? He did. Okay. He called me, he was gonna pick me up and then he did. Then police told her that they had arrested Will for the murder of Anna and Michelle's response was a little off. I want you to know right now that Will's under arrest for murder. Okay, okay. So obviously when she just was like, okay police were really suspicious of her at this point they were wondering why she wasn't freaking out why aren't you freaking out that the guy you're with possibly murdered this other woman or maybe you're freaking out because things are starting to unravel they just thought her having pretty much no reaction to that was very strange as they question her about that michelle says that she is indeed shocked and upset how are you not extremely upset right now to I, know that the person who you were romantically involved with. I am very upset right now. I'm very upset right now. I don't understand how that can be a person that I have spent the last year and a half with. So fast forward to July of 2018, Will is formally indicted for Anna's murder. However, the defense of course, tried to argue that it could have been Michelle. They're not arguing that it was Michelle, they're just trying to cast enough doubt in the jury's eyes that maybe it wasn't Will, because obviously it does look kind of bad. And Michelle did say that she wanted Anna gone, that she wanted this to be fixed. But she says to this day that she never wanted Anna to be murdered. She had no idea that Will was capable of this or was even thinking about it. And she simply just wanted him to fix it as in break up with her, make her go back to Russia, you know, end the relationship, not end her life. One thing that they argued was very odd was the fact that Michelle actually ended up with Anna's phone that night. Strangely enough, Will decided to give Michelle Anna's phone and just said to hang on to it. And so when the police came there, she was in possession of it, which looks really bad. Also, one thing that was weird was Michelle's phone records showed that she was in the area that Anna's body was found, which is this remote foresty area that she shouldn't be hanging out at. But Michelle claimed that Will had taken her to that spot one time and she was just in the car. The defense also made the argument that Will loved Anna, that he wouldn't wanna kill her, that they were gonna be starting their lives together and getting married. But the prosecution argued that all of Will's feelings and how he acted about things was really fake. 
in the first place. I mean, this guy has a serious history of lying anyway. So they were adamant that he was the one and only killer and that Michelle did not know that he was gonna do this. Also, when the shotgun was tested for fingerprints, the only fingerprints that came up were Will's, not Michelle's. They were also able to kind of put a timeline together and track Will's movements throughout the day based on his phone pings. And they saw that right around 4.45, he was at the spot that on his body was found. And that's around the time that they think she was dumped there. So it just all added up. It was also argued that all of the trash that was left at the crime scene belonged to Will, not Michelle. And then another piece of evidence that ended up being huge in this case was they pulled up the surveillance footage from the convenience store. This would have been right after Will had murdered Anna. And they noticed that there are these two dark spots on his head. They almost look like moles, but if you compare it to photos of before this time, they are not there. So these are not any type of mole or birthmark or freckle. It's possible that this was blood spatter on his head. The trial had started in October of 2019 and over 70 people testified. It lasted about a month and the jury came back finding Will guilty. He was found guilty of Anna's murder as well as identity theft and two counts of second degree theft for stealing from her bank account. And then in January of 2020, Will was sentenced and he received a life sentence in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years, which personally, I don't think that's enough, but let me know your thoughts. Now, Michelle didn't get charged or anything, but this definitely changed her life. She got a ton of scrutiny in her town. Rumors have gone crazy online. And it got so bad that in June of 2018, she actually had attempted to take her own life. Luckily, she was unsuccessful, but she still feels so guilty to this day. You know, she feels bad that people even think that she could have done this. She feels bad about what happened to Anna, that she never wanted anything bad to happen to this girl. She said she was a nice enough girl. And you know, she just wanted her man back. She wanted them to break up. I don't feel like Will is that smart. That's why he left his trash at the fucking crime scene. And I think if Michelle was involved, she probably wouldn't have made that mistake or would have coached him a little better. I don't know. I really don't think she was involved in this at all. The defendant very nearly got away with this crime. It was his own trash that betrayed him. There's definitely no charges or anything like that against Michelle. She's an innocent person. I truly believe she is. As of today, Will is in jail where he belongs. Anna's ashes were sent back to Russia. Terribly sad what happened to her. I don't think she saw this coming at all. Will has filed an appeal. Probably not gonna go anywhere with that, but He's trying, so I guess to be continued on that. But I wanna know what you guys think about this case. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. On your way out, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. It works like half the time, but hey, if you hit it, maybe you have a chance. And that is it for me today, guys. I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you next week.